So I'm on to the next part of the sweater uh, transformation. I've taken off the, the rib. So all the stitches around the bottom are on two needles. I got one needle for the front and one needle for the back. I'm going to actually now take out a section of the sides and stitch the sides together and then I'm going to knit the rib downwards. Um, so here is the first side. This is what I've done. So I know the yarn is very dark, so it is hard to see and it's a gloomy, gloomy dark time of year at the moment. Um, so that's the underarm. That was seamed together and then the stitches, uh, sleeves were knitted um, with the yoke in the raglan shaping. So those were seamed together. So I undid that seam um, so I could get right up to here and then I basically crocheted, I found the middle place, the middle where the side seam would have been. I put a red thread through it so I'll be able to see it. And then I measured either side of that how much I want to take off and it's two centimeters either side of that middle seam. Um, and I put another red thread through there and then just inside that thread about sort of half a stitch to a stitch I crocheted the seam. Now I actually counted and measured two centimeters and I counted how many stitches that was and then I counted that number of stitches from that side where I put the red thread in and then I did the crochet um, half a stitch in from the red thread because the red thread is where I want the seam to be so I've got a cut inside so I'll be cutting in between here roughly where that red line is. So I've done one side, I've gone right from the bottom. Now I also had live stitches here, I cast those off across the section where I'm going to be cutting. I cast off those stitches across there, then I crocheted up one side and up the other side and I did both the seams so that they kind of go in towards the middle. Um, so I'm now going to do the other side. So. Let's just work this out. So this is the other side. Um, it might be easier to put the stitches on a piece of waste yarn, but I was a little bit worried about cutting the wrong bit. And being on the needle, I can see which bit I'm supposed to be cutting and which bit I'm not supposed to be cutting. So I use the red thread as the kind of guideline. Um, there is a red thread all the way through up here, but I think I pulled it a bit, um, a bit too tight, so it doesn't show that well, but it is all the way up here. So I'm going to start crocheting down here and that is a little bit difficult for me because I'm sitting behind the camera so I've got my arms around my tripod so it is a little bit difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast off those stitches across there. And I got some, when I unripped the, when I picked out the um, section from the bottom here, I, the yarn I actually unpicked, the row I unpicked, I kept some of that yarn just to use for little bits and pieces that I have to do. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cast off these stitches here that are across the area that I'm going to cut and, and seam. So I'm just going to slip these stitches onto here. So that one. So I'll just join in this new yarn. This is yarn that's been unraveled, um, but I'm not worried about that. So I'm, I'm casting off from that red line to the other red line. So I've now cast off the stitches here. And I'm now going to undo that row of um, that seam there. So I'm now going to undo this seam here at the underarm. Now be a bit careful about this because some people will graft these stitches and some people will seam them. Now I can tell here when I look at the inside that this is a seam. Um, so I knew there was a seam but I checked that very carefully first to make sure it was a seam. Now because this is all very dark and it's very difficult to see, what I did was where the seam is I tried to pull it Put my thing, one finger inside and I tried to pull it out. Um, put my finger inside the seam and then I'm just trying to, what I want to do is find the thread that's actually used to sew up with and it's so easy here to actually cut the wrong thread and end up with the whole, with the um, stitches actually unravelling. In fact, on the other side I found it quite easy to find the thread that 
um, my mum would used to sew up with but it's a little bit harder here so I'm gonna hope that's the right one I try and do sort of roughly in the middle um, and then I'm just gonna unpick that seam obviously I'm gonna have to redo this seam later Okay, so that's one side, and then I'm just going to undo a little bit that side. There we go. Okay, now because I'm taking out this chunk here, I may actually take out a bit on the sleeve because that's going to be narrower, but I've still got to fit it in here. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. When I sew this up, I may have to kind of taper it into the sleeve, which may mean doing a little bit of sticking technique on the sleeve as well. But we'll have a look at that when I get that far. Um, it's very difficult with this thing to sort of think too far ahead. Now, if I had some of this blue yarn, I would use that, but I don't. So I'm going to use another blue yarn, which is similar. Um, it's a bit lighter. It actually makes it a bit easier to see. So I don't want to go outside that line because that's where I want the seam to be. So I need my, my crochet seam to be inside that line. So I want to do it about half a stitch in and what I tend to do is I tend to actually fold it over. So I'm going to go through the bottom here just to fasten my yarn. So I go into the cast on edge or the cast off edge. Oops, sorry. So I go through the cast on off edge. These are the stitches I just cast off a minute ago and I'm using the wrong yarn. I'm crocheting with my tail there. That's not good. Right. So just to fasten the yarn kind of across the edge across the cast on edge and then I'm going to try and find out so it's there and then I want to go about half a stitch in now what I tend to do when I'm sticking is I tend to actually fold them find the corner stitches I'm going to be crocheting into and then I fold it so that I got just that stitch the two legs between my fingers and that way I find it a lot easier and quicker to crochet so, so I'm going to do a slip stitch crochet so I'm folded it over and go into the next pair of legs bring the yarn through those two pair of legs and then instead of taking the yarn over again I just take that strip oops I'm trying to watch the screen on my phone I'm trying to watch what I'm doing and it's not that easy especially because I got I'm kind of got my arms around my tripod um, Right, so let's try that again. So I go under two pairs of legs, through, and then I go straight through that stitch. So into the next pair of legs, yarn over, through, and then straight through the stitch that's already on my hook. like that not very easy to see this really um so i'm going to go all the way up here now the important thing is to make sure that you stay in a straight line now normally if i was doing this on a sweater which i was planning to steek i would have done um the steek is actually the stitches that you're going to cut so i would normally the steek is knitted in two different colors like checkerboard or pinstripes so I like doing pinstripes because that means I can choose one leg in each colour. So I just choose one leg from one stitch and one leg from the next stitch next to it. And then I can see, uh, it's so much easier to see that I stay in, this, in a straight line. I don't have that now because this, and this is also very dark, it's, it's navy blue. So it's very, very dark. Um, so I've just got to be very, very careful, which is why I like folding it over so that I just have, so it's almost like, like that. And then the stitch at the top here is the two legs of, that I'm going to be uh, crocheting into. Now, if you are new to uh, steaking techniques, um, I do recommend taking a class. Um, I teach a lot of classes in the UK, mainly in the southwest and south of, uh, of the UK. 
So in 2017, I'm teaching classes on Sneaking in Devon and Berkshire. And there might be other, other locations to come, so do keep an eye on my website. The link is at the end of this video. And in my classes, you get plenty of practice. Um, you do, we do uh, slip stitch crochet and we do double crochet. And it doesn't matter if you've never crocheted before, you can still manage to do the slip stitch crochet. You can, of course, use a sewing machine and actually seam them on the seam on, on the sewing machine, and you can probably seam them by hand as well. I've never seamed them by hand. I have. My mum always used to use the sewing machine. Um, I haven't done it on a sewing machine by myself, and I'm not that great at sewing, so I just feel safer because you have to go through each stitch uh, to make sure it doesn't unravel. So I feel that this is safer for me. So I've now crocheted up the seam here and I've crocheted one there. The outer red lines is where I want my final side seam to be. So I've crocheted two seams inside that line to secure um, everything. And now I'm gonna cut. Now the red line is the middle. Now normally I would cut up the middle, but because I don't want big chunky side seams, I'm actually going to cut a bit closer um, to the crochet seam. So I'm not going to cut up the middle. I'm going to cut about a stitch in from the crochet seam. You don't want to go too close to the crochet seam because then it's more likely that things will unravel. Um, I mean, it's very, very, very unlikely that things will unravel, but it's better to stay a bit further away from the actual um, crochet seam or machine sewn seam, depending on how you reinforce it. So I'm just going to cut up here. Now I prefer to use um, small sharp scissors because I have more control. And I just do it nice and slowly. There's no point just trying to rush it because you can easily just wear off course and that would be, it could have disastrous effects. So normally, when you normally sneak a sweater, you would just cut up and that be it. But because I don't want these big thick side seams, I'm actually cutting a bit out um, in the middle here, so I'm gonna cut on this side as well, but normally you just do like one cut up the middle and that'll be it But I'm gonna cut up here as well So now I'm going to seam this seam together now I do have a problem in that I have quite a big piece here Which match the sleeve now I'm gonna have less on this. Um, sorry. I I have this big piece here that matched the body. I'm going to have less there in the body now, so I'm going to have to uh, do something about tapering this into the seam. I haven't quite decided what to do yet, so I'm going to seam this up first and then see what it looks like. So, so I'm now going to seam this up. I do apologise that it's a bit dark. Um, light is really bad at the moment. Um, it is the middle of the day and I even got the ceiling light on uh, to try and make it a little bit lighter. So I apologise for any darkness, but I'm going to now do mattress stitch. So I want to follow this red line. Um, so I'm going to go on one side under two stitches. Now the thread from the crochet seam, I'm going to leave that till I've finished sewing up and then I'm, I can sew that into the, um, weave that into the seam. Um, right, let me just see what I'm doing here. So I want a bit of a tail, not too long a tail. Now this red stuff, red thread, I'm going to actually undo as I go. So I won't end up with that red thread there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go under two uh, rows on that side. Now two, each strand is one row. It is a bit awkward when you start because I've got needles here and yarn and it's all a bit of a bit of a mess at the moment so okay so I have gone under two strands on one side and two strands on the other side now what you're aiming for is between two stitches you've got these strands one strand is one row I tend to do two strands on the other side I've already done the other side so I actually did three to make it a bit quicker so the first one I did two either side and I'm going to do three so back onto the second side. Now I go into the hole I came out of last time. 
Now when I teach this and when I do demos, I normally do it in a contrasting colour. But I don't really want a contrasting colour on this sweater because I don't want it to show. Um, okay, so back to that side. Into that side. In under three strands. And up. So everything is done from the right side of the fabric. That's what's so great about mattress stitch. Um, you're doing, oops, sorry. You're doing all the work from the right side of the fabric, which is what I really like about mattress stitch. And as I go up, I then undo I could just, once I've started, I could just take that red thread out. It's just kind of like a guide thread, but I do find it quite good to have it there. Just to make sure I stay roughly on track. This side. It'll be a bit easier once I get away from these knitting needles. They're a little bit in the way at the moment. Um, it might be easier to actually put the stitches, the live stitches at the bottom here on a waist yarn while I'm seaming it, but um, I decided to leave it on the on the cable, on the knitting needle, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to undo that one. A little bit more there we go okay so once i've done an inch or two i can then zip start zip up this up so to start with i'm going to hold on to the tail and then just pull it i've got quite a long tail so i'm just gonna there we go now make sure when you pull it tight that you don't pull it so tight it starts to pucker Okay, so I'm basically going to just carry on doing mattress stitch all the way up this seam. Um, and here is one I did earlier. So this is the other side. This is the other side. And I basically, oh, basically there's a seam all the way here. Um, you can't see it that well. You can feel it. That's the inside. I may, once I've finished, trim this edge a little bit closer to the crochet seam. Uh, or I may just sort of slip stitch it down. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I'm going to have to decide once I've finished. Um, right, so once I've finished the uh, seam here, um, I the bit under the arm, there's a section of the sleeve and a section of the um, body that was um, stitched together. Um, Quite often that's actually grafted together using Kitchener stitch, but this it was on this one it was cast off and then stitched together. Now the bit that's left on the sleeve is wider than the bit that's left on the body. And if I try and ease it in, which I could do, I might end up with a bit of a lumpy bit. So I'm not gonna do that. So what I've done is I've tried to crochet a kind of V. I don't know how easy it is to see that. I do apologize for the fact that it's so dark, but the sweater is navy blue. Um like a v-shape here and then i'm going to just cut a bit out inside that um so let me show you how i'm doing that on the other side i must admit this is uh, the whole sweater this is the bit that i was most worried about because i haven't done this kind of thing before so to try and make sure that i line this up um in the center of the uh, underside of the sleeve what i did was uh, I don't know how easy to see this. Um, I tried to find the first or the final increase, which is there and there, and then I go right in the middle of those two. To roughly find the middle, and then I just again use this red thread just so I know roughly where the middle, the center line is. Okay. And I want to actually go about 10 rows down, so I'm actually going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's actually where I want the seam to end. 
so to make it a little bit easier on myself I'm actually going to pull that one out so that's how far I want to go down with my crochet seam now I'm going to use the blue again and let me just check how many stitches over I went. So one, two, three, so probably about three stitches over. To start off, I just put the, need, the hook through the um, cast off edge. I don't really want that red. One, two, three. So I start off by putting the hook through the cast off edge. Um, pull the yarn through, yarn over the hook and through just to fasten that. Now because I'm going diagonally what I decide to do and I haven't actually never actually done this before so I just really hope it will work. I Each stitch has two legs so I go into the first two legs, pick up two legs, so that's one stitch and then I do that a second time so I do two, two rows of two legs. Now I take one leg of the stitch I just used and another leg further in. So if you think about the two legs, two legs and I went under those two legs, this, hang on let me do it like that. So I went under those two legs Now neck twice, I did one then I did the next one row down. Now I'm going to use that leg and the one next to it. So I'm gradually going diagonally in towards the center line. And I've decided to do two rows each, so two rows, and then I take the one leg from one and one leg from the next stitch in, and I do two rows, and then I go another bit, a little bit in. Um, I haven't done a diagonal line before. So this was just how I decided that it might be best in order to make sure that my stitches don't unravel. Um, and it ends up looking okay. So so now by that um, my red middle line. I'm going to take that out just so I don't crochet that in. Okay, so that's how far I'm going to go down. So now I'm going to turn it so you can see that. So now I'm going to go back out that way. So I'm going to go into the next two legs next to where I've just been and then do that twice and then one leg from that stitch and the next leg over. So I'm not going into the same row twice so I've got one row two legs then I go to the next row two legs and then I go one in or out depending on which direction I'm going in. You have to kind of keep looking at it to make sure I don't go too far out to the side. And this is really, really hard because the light is appalling at the moment. Um, I could really do some bright photography lights just to see what I'm doing really. Um, so I'm just going to check roughly how that's looking. So I'm actually thinking that is a little bit too far out compared to that. So I'm actually going to go back a little bit and go 
in there. As you can see, this is a bit trial and error, and don't be afraid to undo what you've done and redo it so you're happy with it. Right, so that's better. So now I'm on the final one, so that'll be those two. And then go make sure I go right up to the cast off edge, go through the cast off edge, pull the yarn through, and then I just go yarn over the hook so it actually goes around over the top of the cast off edge and then pull it through. There we go. So this is kind of roughly um, okay, I hope. So I'm now going to cut inside there. So I'm just gonna, I don't wanna go right up close to that seam. Sort of like roughly about a stitch in. And I'm basically just gonna cut a wedge out. Very careful when you do this so you don't actually cut, catch any fabric that you shouldn't be cutting out. Um, okay, now I can, I can go in later and just trim things a bit if I need to. Okay, so now I'm going to take all those, all these threads here, which I'm going to fasten later. I'm going to just pull them to the inside so they're out of the way. And then I'm going to, I've got a tail here. I'm actually going to break that. That's the end leftover yarn that I use for the side seam. Now I could use that to carry on, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to use a new piece of yarn, so I'm just going to take that through to the inside, so that's out of the way, so all the ends are on the inside. And then I've got another piece of yarn here. And I'm going to start here, now I'm not going in a straight line like I was before, I'm going diagonally, so I'm just trying to go like half a stitch outside that line. And I'm just trying to follow that kind of diagonal line. So it's the same principle as mattress stitch, but it won't be exactly the same because I'm going in diagonal line. So I just go under a couple of rows and then across the other side and under. The principle is the same, it's just I'm not following one kind of, um, normally you choose a line between two stitches and you just follow that all the way up. I'm not, I'm just going diagonally across. Um, but apart from that, the principle is the same as regular mattress stitch. to the end and pull it tight. Now I'm not 100% happy with here, it's a little bit of a kind of bulky bit there, so let's just pull that through the inside. Okay, so it is a little bit bulky here, um, unfortunately that's just, I can't help that really. Um, so now I'm going to turn the sweater inside out. I'm going to do this next bit from the inside because I think that will be easier with all these threads I have here. Um, and the challenge is really to make this area not too bulky. So I'm going to use one of my longer pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch this across like that. So. Start like that. Now I'm not going to do mattress stitch on this bit because it's only a little tiny bit. So I'm just going to go in and out. Okay, and then I'm just going to go back again just to make sure that 
that's really nice. Right, I'm not going to weave that one in yet. I'm just going to make sure I'm actually happy with this before I weave anything in. Um, trying to work out right. I'm actually going to use that one. Even though it's not dark blue, I'm hoping because it's under the arm, it won't actually show. I just because there's so many ends here already, I'm a bit reluctant to introduce any more. Um, now, if the stitches here had been grafted together, undoing the graft is quite difficult because the graft looks like just a row of stitches, so it's a bit challenging to undo it. But if you manage to do that, you could actually instead of um, cutting out this wedge thing if it's just a tiny bit you could actually cast off those you could actually sort of decrease those stitches try and decrease them somehow um so you taper it in by decreasing on the sleeve side uh, and then you could graft them together again okay so i'm just gonna have a quick look to see how that looks okay I think I'm happy with that roughly so now I'm just going to weave in these ends now this one at the end here I can just go across here a few stitches you don't need to go miles and miles and miles Just enough to make sure they're secure. And then I'm going to trim that one. And then I'm going to work on this area here. So. So I have got a bit of a hole here, as you can see. So to close up that hole, I'm going to go diagonally across. And then I'm going to go from that bit to that bit. And then I'm going to go diagonally across here. And then I'm going to go across there. So I just want to try and make sure that that ends up. Um, through like that. OK, so that's more or less closed up now. So now I'm going to just go down. I'm going to weave in this end. So I'm going to go down this seam now the key is because i've got all these ends here to weave in is to make sure i don't weave them all into the same um area so i don't get any more bulk there's already quite a lot of bulk here actually um yeah now what i'm making sure is that i actually go inside you can see i've got this crochet my crochet line here i go inside between that and my uh, side seam so that if i decide to trim off the cut edge i can do and it's not going to cause me a problem. Okay, there we go. Trim that one. And then I got these blue ones, slightly lighter blue ones that I need to weave in. And again, you want to try and get them away from this area. You can use these to actually reinforce your seam. Um, but you also want to try and make sure you take them, if you've got several, that you kind of take them in different directions so you don't um, you don't weave, weave them all into the same area. So that's done. Let's just do all the royal blue ones first. So this one I'm going to go down. This isn't quite as neat as I would like it. And I am a little bit worried that it's going to be a bit bulky. But I'm not quite sure how else to, to deal with it. So this one I'm actually taking down this seam line here. Oops. Oh, sorry. I'm taking this one down this seam line on the sleeve. So I can kind of reinforce that a bit. Um, I think that'll do. This royal blue yarn is actually quite sort of sticky, so I'm hoping that as this is worn, especially because this is under the arm, there's a lot of friction there, I'm hoping this will sort of felt together a little bit. 
So I don't think I want to take that one into the seam again because I don't want it too bulky. So I'm actually going to take this one just into the stocking stitch fabric here. Now when you're using a um, contrasting colour like this, just do check before you trim the end that it doesn't show through on the other side. It shouldn't, uh, but just make sure. Okay.